Father, of your word that teaches us and brings us closer, Father, to you. Lord, I, I'm so overjoyed, Father, that your word was established to lead us, not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. And so, Father, as we go today and we open your book, Father, and we just read about some of the things, Father, that happened in the past that have a direct reflection on today, Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Lord, again, open the eyes and ears of our heart, Father, so that we may receive and, and just know the things you have for us, Father. We thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you. In your precious name we pray, Father. Amen. So I want to go to 1 Kings 21. And it'd be verse 25. <clears throat> In 1 Kings 21, 25, says this. Uh, maybe that's not where I want to go. Maybe that is where I want to go. That's not where I want to go. Oh, it's going to be a long day today. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's because my Bible's in 2 Kings. We're in 1 Kings. I just overshot the mark. All right. Oh, Lord, just keep me focused. All right, so 21, 25. There, that's where we want to be. Actually, I want to go to verse 20. No, I'm going to stay to 25. 25. It's one of the, this is where mercy and grace come in, that you give your pastor. <laughs> so, because your pastor's human, like Lefty said, we're human. Okay, so, okay, so verse 25 says, Still, there was no one like Ahab who devoted himself to do what was evil in the Lord's sight. Uh, think about that. That was what his, his devotion was to do everything he could to irritate God. Uh, God to the place where God was angry. All right? This is what he did. Now, I want you to lay over that statement today. How many people are just set out to really tick God off? Not even caring the, 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 the consequences of that. This was Ahab's goal. Ahab, because of the lineage that he came from, from Jeroboam, and Jeroboam was against God and all that, all of a sudden it's coming down the road. And every time it comes down the road, it's like this. There are five, five disciplines. And each discipline in Leviticus gets worse every single time it keeps going. There's Jeroboam who started, well, actually Solomon. Solomon started bringing in strange spirits into the, into the temple. So you have Solomon, Jeroboam, and you keep going down. And all these kings, all these kings that were related, sons of one, sons of another, sons of another, all continuously doing as much evil as they can to irritate God. even to the place where God got mad and he tried to take them all out. But all of a sudden, I've said this before, a generational curse comes back. And so now we have Ahab. And we talked a lot about Ahab last week too. So still there was no one like Ahab who devoted himself to do what was evil in the Lord's sight because his wife Jezebel incited him. His wife Jezebel incited him. Now, Jezebel's father's name was Ethbaal, Baal, because my wife just gave me the evil eye. Eth Baal, that means close to the false god, Baal. All right? So here's a father who was worshiping a false god, and because he brought that spirit in to Jezebel, Jezebel became a Baal worshiper. And it being a Baal worshiper meant that you worshiped a number of other false gods along with Baal. 
Now, it's interesting because way back when the walls of Jericho were taken down by Joshua, and the reason they were taken down was because God wanted Baal and Asheroth and the false gods that were with Baal to be destroyed. And Joshua even said, Listen, anybody who tries to rebuild Jericho will be cursed. They will lose their firstborn, and they will lose their lastborn. But here's the funny thing. It doesn't mention it. There were other ones in the process of that rebuilding that were taken from Halil. Halil was a Tishbite, and he decided to rebuild Jericho. Why? At the prompting of Ahab and Jezebel. So Baal, Baal, skippy dippy doo da I don't care what the name is at this point in time, false the false god decided to re-enter civilization through the rebuilding of Jericho. Now, when a door is closed, when a door is closed, we are told by Paul in Galatians not to reopen it. Not to reopen a door. But you know what we've done today in society? We've reopened a door. We've reopened a door. Now, I just want to, I, I, I actually just preached my entire message. I'm done. Let's go home. I'm only kidding. <coughs> so, again, there's a word. Let me finish this first. So, again, Jezebel incited him. He committed the most detestable acts by following idols, as the Amorites had, whom the Lord dispossessed before the Israelites. Now, the word dispossessed in the Hebrew is the word yarash. And yarash means to take possession of. So here's Jericho. Here's, here's all of this stuff. And God says, I'm going to, pos I'm going to dispossess that. I'm going to take possession of it. I'm going to bring it to the ground. I'm going to take away that stronghold. And I'm going to say through Joshua, if anybody rebuilds this, they will be cursed. So, Yarash means to take possession of. It as well means to destroy, to cast away, as well as to expel. I want you to think about this really quick. Because as we were talking with a number of the people out here, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because... A lot of, like, like Lisa and her band and a lot of the other bands that are older, we, we all know each other because we've all battled these demons, all right, in our lives. We've, we've battled things. We've, been, we've, we've had the false gods in our lives that we worship, alcohol, drugs, all this stuff. We had it. And we worshiped it. And then at some point in time, God came in and said, I'm going to dispossess you of that. When we went to him and said, Lord, we can't do this anymore. He opened a door. And that door was to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. But then he closed the other doors. Bang. And, and I love it because the, for one of the very first verses God gave me was Paul in Galatians where he said, For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. In other words, if I go back and I do the things that I used to do, I'm, I'm, I'm entering into transgression. I'm basically saying, Lord, what you did wasn't good enough for me. See? And so, again, when Jericho fell in the book of Joshua, all the idols associated with it fell. They all fell. They were cast away. They were destroyed. They were escorted out the door, and the door closed. And here comes Ahab. And here comes Jezebel. Ahab, you really need to build, rebuild Jericho. Get Hillel to do it. He'll listen to you. And that way the curse won't fall upon you. And so Halil, Halil goes and he rebuilds Jericho. And, and what happens? As soon as he laid the foundation, his first son is, is killed. 
and he keeps building. And every son after that, every time he finished something, he lost a son. When he hung the final gate, his youngest son was killed. God did not want those gates or those doors opened again. But they were opened. Do you know today, through the illustrious workings of governments across the globe, governments across the globe, we have invited every single false god back into the world. We have. And one of the most prominent ones is Asherah and Asha. And that's what it is. You know what? You know who Asher is? Asher's porn. Back in the day, when Baal was there, I find this interesting. Because they had Asher, and, and Asher was the god of fertility. And it's usually... No young kids. Well, yeah, Orville's in here. Oh, you're in here. Well, Asher was a phallic symbol. Now, if you know what a phallic symbol is, you know what I'm talking about. It was something that represented something that was straight, and I'll use the word erect. That's what it was. Now, today, we see that in pornography. We worship pornography. And it's not just men, it's women as well. And so here's what I find interesting. They would worship this God of fertility, have their strange gatherings and meetings, I won't use the word, and then they would go and have children. And then they would take these children and they would sacrifice the children. Huh. Sounds like something that's going on today. See? We promote it, and then we say, sacrifice the children. See? It's kind of interesting, because as we continue to look at these things, and the things that are going on today, we go, what the heck? What the heck? And it's all because we opened a door that never should have been opened So again, all of them fell. They fell because of Joshua's faithfulness, Joshua's perseverance, and Joshua's obedience. That's why. Joshua's obedient to God. Look, look what's happening today. You know, and I love this because I keep going from here to here. The perseverance, the faithfulness, and the obedience is, eh, if I want to, I will. If I don't, I won't. And, and the priority was, was what God said back then happened. Joshua, march around the wall this time. Joshua, march around the wall this time. March around the wall seven times and blow the trumpet and watch what happens. If God told you to march around a city seven times, would you do it? And would you blow a trumpet or would you say, Lord, there's, I love this, Lord, there's got to be an easier way. No, there's no easy way. It's the way I'm telling you to do it because you know what? I'm looking for a certain thing. I'm looking for the obedience that comes with perseverance and faithfulness. And I just want you to do it this way because my plan is perfect. And you know what we do? Oh, we throw the plan out the window when we go, I got a better way. I got a better way. You know, yesterday, it was so funny. There were so many things that went wrong, and nobody knew about it because we persevered. I mean, in the very beginning, poor Jeff, the sound man, I thought he was going to have a nervous breakdown. Um, God love him because he got here, he was ready to set up, and we didn't even have the thing up first. And so that set him back. And then all of a sudden, the bands were, were told that they were supposed to use the sound system that was here, and then they all wanted to bring their own sound system. So Jeff, the sound man's just doing, I mean, God love him. He was, <laughs> he was doing everything he could. And so, you know, instead of, instead of taking and saying, okay, we're going to find a better way, 
we, we are going to find a better way, but we learned through not doing it the right way the first time. This was, the, like I said, the crash test dummy. We've had many crash test dummies in our lives, in, in, in this country as well as every other country. And you would think we would learn. Okay, don't put the dummy in the car and send it to hit the wall. Let's plan this out a little bit more. Let's make it a little bit more safer. Well, the way God's plan was written, it's the safest way. Why? It saves us from the false gods that have re-entered life. So again, Paul in Galatians says, and this is to the Galatian church, and you know why? Because the Galatian church had started re-entering things from the past that they weren't supposed to. The Corinthian church did, the Galatians church did. Every church in the New Testament at one point in time backslid and started allowing the things of the past to re-enter in. And here we are today. See? It's, that's why, you know, you got some pastors that will never go to the Old Testament. Oh, I can't go there. That's, you know, that's before. They, they, I just want to do the grace and the love. And, and there's nothing wrong with grace and love as long as you use grace to learn how to not to go back and do the stupid things you did before. And unconditional love is wonderful because that means I can go back to the Lord when I wear my you-know-what as a hat. See, that's what grace is. But, but we, today, need to look at these things and lay them over because I'm telling you what. If you watch things going on around the world, you are going to see Ahab and Jezebel returning. And they are coming back with a vengeance. You know why? Because they're mad. The Baal worshipers and the Asheroth and Asherah pole worshipers are coming back. Not them, but the spirits behind that are coming back because they're angry. They were cast out. And so now, here they come. And the funny thing is, is we, we, get, we get hooked up in the emotions and the feelings and senses, and instead of looking at things with spiritual eyes, we look at things with the human eyes, and the human eyes starts to get us in an emotional froth. And the next thing you know, we're just, we're just making statements in our feelings, in our emotions, in our senses. And there's no biblical definition to any of it. So when Jericho was destroyed, Joshua warned that whoever would rebuild the city would suffer great consequences. How the first and youngest son would die in the wicked days of the wicked Ahab Hail of Bethel, which was a wicked, wicked city. I mean, it was a wicked city. In itself, <coughs> excuse me, decided that he was going to rebuild Jericho at the prompting of Ahab because of the prompting of Jezebel. Same. And so when he laid the foundation, his oldest son, I love this, Abigail died. That was his name. And when the gates were set, Segub, his youngest son, died. Now, in this content, when the city was rebuilt in the time of Ahab, it was at, again, the enticement of Jezebel. Jezebel. See? So when we say, when we talk about a Jezebeling in spirit, it's a spirit of control. It's a spirit that wants to take over through creating division. It's a spirit of gossip and whispering. We talked about um, Wednesday night, we talked about conspiracies. Jezebel spirits start conspiracies. All right? it's, it's, it's something that comes in and creates division. Why? Because it is a Baal worshiper, Baal worshiper, and it worships Asher and Asheroth. All right? So again... The purpose of destroying Jericho was to remove the Canaanites as well as the Amorites who worship Baal more than anybody. That was where Baal, Baal worship was practiced. And so God said, take that out. Take that out. And Joshua, again in his faithfulness, did exactly what God told him to do. You know, 
we have so many different people that have come before us in the word of God that have warned us not to step back into these things. Paul, Timothy, every single, every single disciple and everything, every single apostle came forward and when Paul wrote letters to churches when he was in jail saying, don't do this. Don't go backwards. Go forwards. Put God first. And I love the way Paul said, he goes, he goes we boast about you, because he knows they're doing stupid stuff. We boast about you. We're telling them how wonderful you are. And then Timothy comes back, or somebody comes back and says, well, Paul, they're not really doing what they're supposed to be doing. And so Paul sends a letter. It's just like God sent a prophet to all these people, and you know, pretty soon we'll see Elijah enter the scene. And Elijah is going to have a little conversation with Ahab. And it's funny because Jezebel wants to kill Elijah. What was the purpose of destroying the stronghold of Jericho to remove the Canaanites, as well as the Amorites, and all the Baal worship that had been practiced? Now, in a divine perspective, they had reappeared as Ahab and his house. So... When they reappeared, they reappeared as Ahab, Jezebel, and their house because they were the ones that brought them all back into worship. Think about it today. Who has brought the worship of false gods and different things back today? I'll tell you who. Everybody up here in the government. God is not a priority in our government, period. They can say they're this, they can say they're that. I could say I'm a monkey and walk around on my knuckles and my knees and make funny noises, and people say, oh, he's a monkey. No, he's not. He's a human being. See, we develop the things we feel are worship worthy. And for some reason, we put God on the back burner. Yesterday, God was front and center. He was the one being worshipped. He was the one being sung about. So in this little plot of land in Standish, Maine, God was the priority. God was the priority. See? Now, if you could take that and multiply it by a bazillion, do you, do you think that maybe something might happen? You know, I love it because I, I was... A couple weeks ago, there was an Israelite on TV, and he said these words, we're going to have to make a deal with the devil to get our captives free. No, you make a deal with the devil, that's a death sign. That's what that is. You never deal with the devil. Never, ever, ever make a deal with the devil. Never sell your soul. Ahab and Jezebel sold their souls to Baal, Baal, and all the false gods that came before them. <coughs> How many have today made a deal so that they could prosper with the enemy? See? Again, God took him out. And Ahab and Jezebel brought him back. Let's look at 1 Kings 16 for a minute. I'm hoping my voice holds up. So it's 16. Where'd I go? Verse 29. Ahab, son of Amri, became king over Israel in the 38th year of Judah's king. <coughs> Excuse me, Asa. Ahab, son of Amri, reigned over Israel and Samaria 22 years. But Ahab, son of Amri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight. This is the second time that's mentioned. It's mentioned a lot more times. More than all who were before him. 
Then as if following the sin of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, weren't enough, he married Jezebel, the daughter of Ephbal, king of the Sidonians, and then proceeded to serve Baal and bow and worship to him. He set up an altar for Baal. There you go, right there. How many times have we set up an altar for a false god in our life? How many times? I would probably say a lot. False god of, of alcohol. False, false god of addiction. False god of um, inappropriate behavior. False god of, of cheating in a marriage. False god of, of pornography. We, the altar right there, that's the computer. It's a little altar we go to, and we open it up, and usually it's done in a dark room. And the next thing you know, it's like, oh. And now we're praising it because we're focused on it and we're worshiping it. Say, I can honestly say I've never had a problem with porn. That just was not one of those things that I would love. Drugs, alcohol, yeah, I did, but not porn. Nope. I never worshiped Asher. <coughs> or the Asherah pole. Never worshipped it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I hate allergies. But there are many men that do. There are many men that do. There are many Christian men that do. And their, their, their excuse is, oh, the woman's form is art. Or some other ridiculous thing. Meanwhile, what they're doing is they're contaminating their soul. They're contaminating their soul. See? And then what happens? Our thoughts change. And that's what happens with, with Baal. And this year, the thoughts change. And we become centered in a depravity that what we think is correct or what we see is correct when it's not. And so what happens? We get caught up. We get caught up. Ahab, he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal that he had built in Samaria. Ahab also made an Asherah pole. Ahab did more to anger the Lord God of Israel than all the kings of Israel who were before him. During his reign, Heel, the, Beth, the Bethlehite, built Jericho. At the cost of Abraham, his firstborn, he laid its foundation. At the cost of Segub, his youngest, he finished his gates according to the word of the Lord. He had spoken through Joshua, son of Nun. All of a sudden, in this point in time, here comes Elijah. So if we look at verse seven, or chapter 17... Now Elijah the Tishbite from the Gilead settlers said, he just showed up, said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives, in whose presence I stand, there will be no dew or rain during these years except by my command. So God told Elijah, go tell him he ain't going to get no more rain until he gets his head out of his rear end and does what he's supposed to do. Now Elijah would come back and forth to Ahab so many times, I think it's 33 times. That's how stubborn Ahab is. How many times in our life has God sent the messenger, the Holy Spirit, to speak to your heart, and you're so cold and so caught up in the worship of an idol in your life that you ignore him so many times that all of a sudden you say, okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to bring you through the driest period of your life. Watch what happens. And all of a sudden you're, you're thirsting. In the stubbornness of this whole thing. Ahab is so stubborn. Why is Ahab stubborn? Because there's somebody whispering in his ear. Because Jezebel is wicked. And she does not want him bowing to God. She doesn't even know who God is because of her father who was Ethbal, Ethbaal. And Ethbaal was a Baal worshiper. See? Now, as we look at these verses, I want to show you just how twisted this time was and why God was so angry. Now, Asherah was based on the common worship of generative organs. 
and the Shira specialized in two things, sexual love and more. So in other words, get them all foamy and frothy, and then kill them all. That's what they did. And so it was kind of interesting because, again, they built these temples. And these temples were a place where legalized vices were held. As a matter of fact, legalized you-know-whats were held. Now just imagine, God has a standard that's set in Levitical law, in Mosaic law, in, in Hebrewic law. All these laws are set. And Ahab and Jezebel are breaking every single one of them in such a vile manner that God is raging. He's raging. It's kind of interesting because, you know, it's, it's interesting to say, some people say, oh, we're so blessed today. And you know what? We are blessed. We're, we're kind of blessed that the Lord hasn't said, all right, as enough is enough. Enough is enough. Even to the place where Ahab, because of prompting from Jezebel, has heal, Hail, start rebuilding a place that, he, that God tore down and re-hanging the doors, the gates. The now, so now, the house of God was now going to be used as the center of Jeroboam's final apostasy. Everything was going to be worshipped that was not supposed to be worshipped in the temple of God. So let's flip it and turn the page. Temple of God. Right here. Temple of God. He created you. He created your heart. He created your, your body as a temple. And he said, you're the watchman over that temple. See? And since you're the watchman, you, you allow what's... You allow what... You're the one that is... How can I put this? You're the one that is going to be the one that allows the things in that are not allowable to be brought in. So in other words, you're the one that gets to open and close the gate. You're the watchman. You're the one that gets to warn out, cry out, don't let it in, it's not good. And you do this by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. See? I want to go to Kings 17. First Kings 17 real quick. <clears throat> so again, we just started it. Now Elijah Tishbite from the Gilead Settlers said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives in whose presence I stand, there will be no dew or rain during these years except by my commands. Then the word of the Lord came to him, leave here, turn eastward, and hide at the Wadi Cherith where it enters the Jordan. That's a river, the Wadi Cherith. So go hide there. Because God knew if, if Elijah stayed, he was dead. Because he knew that Jezebel would already have put out a death, a death watch. Would go kill him. He's talking against us. He wants to keep us from furthering the evil that we've already started. Same. So, again, God told him to go hide in the Wadi Jareth, where it enters the Jordan. You are to drink from the Wadi. I have commanded the ravens to provide for you there. This is a statement. Ravens were filthy creatures. God said, I'm going to use the unclean to provide for you. And so what happened? The ravens brought food for Elijah. So he proceeded to do what the Lord commanded. Elijah left and lived at the Wadi Cherith where it enters the Jordan. The ravens kept bringing him bread and meat in the morning and in the evening. And he would drink from the wadi. After a while, the wadi dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Because God said to Elijah, go tell him, no dew, no rain, no nada. And so now, here's Elijah. So then the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, get up, go to Zarephath. That belongs to Sidon, Sidon, and stay there. Look, I have commanded a woman who was a widow to provide for you there. 
So Elijah got up and went to Zarephath, where he arrived at the city gate. There was a widow gathering wood. Elijah called to her and said, Please bring me a little water and a cup and let me drink. As she went to get it, he called her and said, Please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I don't have anything baked, only a handful of flour in the jar and a bit of oil in the jug. Just now I'm gathering a couple of sticks in order to go prepare it for myself and my son so we can eat it and then die. So in other words, there's not going to be anything. I don't know why God sent you here. We were just going to make a little bread, eat it, and then we were just going to let ourselves die. See, there's a reason God brought Elijah here. Because Elijah was the blessing on this woman's house. Elijah was the blessing on this woman's house. In the midst of this whole crazy, ridiculous thing, worshiping false gods, saying no more rain, all this stuff, God says, Elijah, I'm going to bring you to this woman and her son. You're going to rescue them. As a matter of fact, Elijah lays on this boy three times and brings him back from the dead. God's miracle, God's providence, God's providence. See, even though Elijah is being threatened to be killed by Ahab and Jezebel, God's still using him. Now, you know, God can use whoever God's going to use to do what God has to get done. Period. And We've seen it a hundred times. So it should not surprise you one iota to watch what God does. See? There's, a, there's a, an interesting comparison between two people, and we'll get there when we get to Jehu. And some of you might not like it. But some of you may go, oh my gosh. Because... It fits perfectly. And the parallels between them are amazing. And so, before you cast judgment, because like I said Wednesday, don't judge lest you be judged, and you'll be judged by the measure that you judge with. I mean, I still got people today saying, I can't believe God used you to be a pastor. Honestly. Honestly. I can't believe it. Oh, well. He did. I am. I don't know why. I mean, there's 100,000 people out there that probably were better equipped than me. But here, here's what it is. When he called, I answered the call and went. That's, I'm not blowing my own horn. It was like yesterday. It was so funny. I said to Sean, I said, Where'd you, where'd you get all these bands from? Where'd you get all these musicians from? He said, they answered the call. I said, really? He goes, all I did was put something on Facebook. We, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't chase after any of these bands. They all called Sean and said, we really love to be part of this. See? They answered the call. So, you know, today, God's still calling. Are we going to answer the call today? Or, or are we just going to continue to worship Baal, Asherah, and all the other twist, sick, twisted gods that we've created in society today? And say, oh, they're this. Why? Because they say they are? What's the fruit of their actions? Remember, the Bible says their fruits will prove who they really are. Say. We, we, had a, we had a group, a, a gentleman drive up from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. We, did, we didn't call him. He's, he's the one that just, he just did an album. He just got back from Nashville and did an album. He said, I really want to be there. He answered the call. Now, I have no idea who he touched with his music yesterday. But I know there was a number of people that were touched by the music from different people out there. He answered the call. Now, he could have said, well, you know, I don't want to drive to Maine. I'm going to stay in Connecticut. I'm going to worship the God of Saturday. I'm going to worship the false God of Saturday. Sit on my couch. Sit back, relax. Or I'm going to go serve the Lord. 
I'm going to close that door of false gods. And I'm going to serve the one true God. The OG, original God. I'm going to do that. See? And that, we really need that more today. We need people to close their computer screens at night. We, we need people to come back and shut the doors and cast out those things that we've actually allowed to come back in. Because again, what happens? Huh? The truth sets us free. The truth sets us free. So if we get back to this, instead of a screen with a bunch of people doing what Asherah does, you know, <clears throat> when it said that they were the goddesses of, of lust and sex and then war, what's the fir- what, what will destroy a soul of man? Because doing that thing with a computer is sinning against the body. And it destroys, it destroys the soul. Because what happens, our mind begins to think, well, that's the way it's supposed to be. And it's not. That's, that's not the love that God gave us. That's the lust of man through Baal. And the Shira. See? And so, again, lay it over. Lay it over. Just lay it all over. And you see this going on today. And nothing is surprising. Because all you need to do is go back and read about Ahab. And, and read how disgusting, vile, and twisted him and Jezebel were. I'm going to wrap this up in about two seconds. <coughs> So then Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a small loaf from it and bring it to me. Afterwards, you may make some for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says. The flour jar, I love this, will not become empty. The flour jar will not become empty. Remember, there was was a drought and there was nothing being grown because there was a drought, but God says to Elijah, you tell that woman that flower jar is never going to be empty. In other words, we will never be empty if we trust in God. And then, again, the flower jar will not become empty and the oil jug will not run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. So she, should, so she proceeded to do according to the word of Elijah. Then the woman, Elijah, and her household ate for many days. The flour jar did not become empty, and the oil did not run dry. According to the word of the Lord, he had spoken through Elijah. Pretty interesting. Say, God's word is truthful. God's word is truthful. We bring doubt into God's word. God's word is truth. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. You know? He is. That's why when he said, if my people humble themselves and call upon my name and repent of their sin, I will heal their land. What is our major malfunction? Because today, we should be on our knees repenting of wearing, you know what is our hat. And denying the word of God in context and in context as it is written and spoken. Paul brought forward the word of God. Timothy brought forward the word of God. John brought forward the word of God. And it was yea and amen. And today we look at that and we go, oh, oh we, can, we, we can change it. Yet Revelation says, woe to those who change or write or add things to the word of God. But I will tell you, there is rewriting and adding and subtracting all over the land today. And all God wants to, out of us is to be obedient. That's, that's simple. Be obedient. Just be obedient. See? It was funny because, you know, again, yesterday never should have happened. In the short period of time that, that we planned it and got it together, none of it should have happened. And then, you know, we got Debbie and her family and Pete and 
Yeah, I know. You're right there, Orville. The, chi the chip boy. It's funny. Orville walked in with a bag of chips, and we all put our hands in it and took chips out of it. I think Orville shot like, what, 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 what? They came from Massachusetts. My sister Dawn drove up from Hartford. People drove from all over the place to come and worship the Lord. See? It's, it's just the way it is. See? And you know what? We were just being obedient. Just being obedient. Some people say, well, you know, you could have made a lot of money doing that. Ah, it's not obedience. It's not about the money. It's never about the money. If you think it's about the money, you better get your head right and get back into the Word of God because nothing was ever done about money. It was done to what? Bring in God in worship for everything else. If we walk by faith like Elijah did, we don't have to worry about it because God said, I'm going to keep that jar full. The oil's always going to be there, and you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm bringing the drought. I'm bringing the oil. I'm bringing the flour. Do you have faith in me? Do you trust me? And will you be obedient to my word? Say, again, we got 50-something days till we all have to make a decision. This is what the decision needs to be made on. And remember, God has already a plan. God has a plan. His plan is perfect. He wants you to know. He wants you to look. He wants you to watch. He wants you to be the watchmen. You know, we've seen what happens when lands turn against God. We've seen it. And if you don't believe it, open your Bible. You're going to watch the land of Ahab and Jezebel come apart. You're going to watch Ahab die a miserable death. And then you're going to watch Jezebel die a miserable death. And her bones will be eaten by dogs in the street. Picked clean not even recognizable it's all in here it's all in here that's the truth that's the truth it sets you free let's pray Father God we come before you Lord Jesus Woo! Lord just uh Father, oh my gosh. Didn't even know the message was going there, but it did. Lord, I just ask, Father, that you would, again, Lord, teach us. Convict us, Father. Bring us to a place, Lord, where you are first. You are first, Father. Lord, I know, Lord, that you are calling us to obedience today, Father. That you are saying, look, just take my hand. My spirit will lead you. <clears throat> Everything that you've done can be fixed. Because first of all, when you repent, I wipe the board clean. And we start over. No more. Clean slate. Absolutely wonderful clean slate. How? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Father, as we, as we sit here today, Lord, and we just think about what we just heard, Father. Lord, there's so much more. There's so many side stories from Abraham, Ahab, Jezebel, Elijah, Elisha, Father. This woman and her son, Lord. So many things. Father, as we just we just think about those things, Lord. Father, we ask that you would speak to our hearts, Father. That you would just say, look, just obedience. That's, what I, that's all I want is obedience. And then, Father, just lead us down that path of obedience. Father, we thank you for yesterday. We thank you for the obedience, Father, of those musicians that just said, I want to come. I want to come. 
And Father, the blessing that was brought with them, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for their laid down lives. Lord, just bless their ministries. In such an amazing way, Lord, that it just blows their mind. Just blows their mind, Father. Lord, we just thank you for this time, Lord. Now, maybe you've never received Jesus Christ in your life. And maybe you have. You only need to do it once. Maybe you've just backslidden a little bit and, you know, started down a wrong path. Well, the, f the first one, if you've never received Christ, that's an easy one. And so isn't the other one. The first prayer is if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it goes like this. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Transform my life, Father. I'm coming to you, Lord, and I'm saying, Father, I was wrong. And, Father, I just want to be right with you. So, Father, just take away my sin nature, Father. Take away the fact that I've worshipped these false gods, Lord Jesus. Jesus, transform me. Come into my heart and save me, Jesus. Bring me to that altar that you've created, that you're worshipped at, Father. And sanctify me, Lord, which means he's going to reveal his plan for your life. Now, maybe you've just kind of walked off the path and wandered out into the fields. And that's an easy prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me for being astray of who you are. Lord, I come to you and I ask for forgiveness, Father. And Lord, lead me back on the path in the right way. Lead me in the path. Now, the first prayer, if you've never received Jesus, and, you know, and again, like I say, you only got to do it once. You only got to receive Christ once. If, and if you never did that, then I, I would love to invite you to do that. And if, you, if you're here today and you've never received Jesus, and you prayed that prayer, then I just would have you lift up your hand real quick and put it back down, and then I'll pray for you. Thank you. And now, Father, again, if you, if you, if you, a repenting, that's between you and God. My prayer is that you will just kind of say to the Lord, Father, just help me back. Help me back. Put me in the right place. Put me in the right place. Father, we thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you. In your precious name we pray, amen. Just let these guys close us out, then I'm going to come up and do the, the prayer of blessing, and then uh, we can all be on our merry little ways and hopefully some of us will get some more sleep <laughs> would you like to stand and join us in singing lord rain in me and closing this out one two three four do, 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 do. over all the earth you reign Every mountain stream, every sunset sky, but my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour. You are the Lord of all I Darkest
wonderful day, and God bless you all. And I want to thank Jenny for taking care of our lyrics today. New helper. Thank you, Jenny. When I said I didn't want you guys clapping for these guys, I want you clapping for the Lord. So you can clap, all right? But make sure the honor is going to God for what he's given them to do so that you can begin to praise God, all right? Because, see, here's what happens with musicians. They get egos. And I can say that because I'm a musician. And so, again, I don't want the ego fed. I want God praised. All right, so I'm going to release you of the non-clapping thing because I want you to praise God. But I, was, I did that for a purpose. All right, I do everything in this church for a purpose. The Lord says, tell them not to clap. Let's see what happens. Now, you can also sing. I know that's tough for some of you, but, in, you know, Sing, sing. That's a that's a form of praise. What are you doing, Crystal? Of course she is. She always acts up. So you can do that. All right. You can sing. You can clap, and then you can worship God and praise God for what He's given them to share with you. All right. So that's. How we're going to do it all right so but there was a reason god said don't clap to tell them not to clap for anybody anymore all right because now if you noticed they've gotten a whole lot better see and they're not doing it because you're clapping for them they're doing it because the lord is the center of what's happening up here now okay so huh well and we do have an amazing attachment or, or on loan from god that sounds like the Blues Brothers. We're on a mission on loan from God. Um, and, and honestly, on, honestly, and this is not to stroke his ego, because he's the first one that says, well, you know, I've never done this before. We're, out, we're sitting out there last night. He's going, I've never played in my life on a stage. And I said, isn't it cool when you just hand it over to God and you let God do it? See? And th this is what they're doing up here now. They've handed it over to God. And then we're going to get Shelly back up here. It's going to be a lot fuller. And it's going to be really, really something different. All right. So, you know, that's the way it's going to go. So, all right. So you can clap. You can praise. Well, not now. Well, go ahead. It's all right. All right. Let's pray. Yavare kaka Adonai v'yesh mirika. Ya'er Adonai penav eleka. Vikun neka yesa adonai panav yaleka ve yasem leka shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Father, we thank you, love you, and praise you, Lord. Father, be with us this week. Guide us, Father, as we continue to seek your kingdom, Father. We thank you, love you, and praise you. And all God's people said, Amen. You are dismissed.